and welcome to this video on understanding basic statistics. The agenda of this video would be to get an overview on basic concepts of basic statistics, understand the measures of central tendency, and understand the measures of spread or variation. Today, statistics is utilized everywhere. We look at numbers, data, and with the help of these numbers, we understand the current performances of business, of governance, organizations, etc. Statistics today is an integral part of any organization's day-to-day -day activity, and hence it is imperative for us to understand what do these values represent and signify. Being Six Sigma professionals, data and numbers are of extreme importance to us. And to understand these numbers, we must be aware of certain basic fundamentals of statistics. Under this topic, we will understand different values that are used to represent the behavior of data. And hence, we will be able to understand how these are used to represent the data itself. When you set out to understand basic statistics, there are two measures that we would want to study. One referred to as central tendency, measured through mean, median or mode or of variation or spread measured through measures like range, quartiles, interquartile range, stability factor, variance and standard deviation. Mean of the data is also referred to as the arithmetic average and is calculated by adding all the data points and dividing the sum of the numbers by the number of data points that are available. Mean equal to sum of all the data points upon number of data points that are available, also written as mean equals one by n into summation of all the data elements. Let's take an example. Let's say we have a data set wherein the values that are available to us are 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. To calculate the mean, we will need to add these values. The sum of these numbers would be 30, and the total number of data points is 5. So, we need to divide the sum of these values by the number of data points. Hence, the mean would become 6. First, you add all of them up. When I added all of them up, I got 30. When I counted the number of data elements that I have, they are 5. So mean will be equal to 30 upon 5, which is 6. When you are looking at sample, sample mean is represented using x bar, while the population mean is represented using mu. There are certain basic properties that a mean shall exhibit, and one must understand them. First, mean is dependent on the magnitude of data points, but is independent of the position of these data points. It is very sensitive to variation. It is used when we need a measure of central tendency that should reflect the total of the scores. It is also used to calculate certain values of variation like standard deviation and variance. Mean varies a little from sample to sample and that it enjoys participation from all data points. It is influenced by every data value. Extreme values influence the mean. The next measure of central tendency is the median. Median is the central point of the data. It divides the data into two equal parts post-ranking the data in ascending or descending order. To calculate, we first need to arrange the data in ascending or descending order and the central value becomes the median. That is why it is referred to as positional average. It is the middle value when the data is arranged in the order of magnitude of the data points. After arranging the data in ascending or descending order, if the number of data point is odd, the central data point 
becomes the median while if the data is even we would average the two central values and that shall become my median median will use a formula of n plus 1 by 2 so n plus 1 by 2 data point shall be my median where n is the total number of data points that gives us the position of the median let's take an example taking the same data set that we took while we were calculating the mean we first need to arrange the data in ascending or descending order here the number of data points is odd i have five data points hence post arranging them in ascending order the central point would be six the third data point that is and that shall be the median using the formula here n is equal to five so n plus one equals six divided by two so the third data point from the top shall be my median let us look at another example of median if we continue to use the same example and add one more data point to make the total number of data points even now i have six data points here the number of data points is even hence post arranging them in ascending order there will be two central values in this case six and eight and their average would become my median which is seven so i would do six plus eight upon two which is seven using the formula here n is equal to six so n plus one would be six plus one that would be seven dividing it by two it will give us a result of 3.5 that is after the data is arranged in ascending order the 3.5th data point will be my median and hence 7 will be the median in our example sample median is represented by x tilde while the population median is represented by eta value the properties that median shall exhibit median is a positional value so it is independent of the magnitude of the data points it is not affected by variation in the data it is the best measure of central tendency when the data is skewed as it is not affected by the extreme values median does not represent all data points but represents a central location of the data array hence median is not biased by extreme values in the data set the next measure of central tendency that we are studying is mode mode is the data point that has the maximum frequency or the number of occurrences in any data set a data can be unimodal that it has a single mode or a bimodal that is having two modes or multimodal that is data can have more than one modes if you see here you would see that 8 has the maximum number of occurrences which would mean 8 is the mode of data and this data is unimodal that is it has a single mode here 4 and 8 have appeared two times each hence both of them are modes for this data hence this data is bimodal having two modes here 4 6 and 8 have appeared two times each hence all three are the modes of this data hence this data is multimodal having more than two modes the decision on whether to use mean or median as the measure of central tendency is based on the variation in the data if there is high variation between the data point if there are extreme values in that case median is the preferred measure of central tendency whereas in case where data is normal or variation is normal we can use either mean or median as the measure of central tendency as in this case mean and median shall be approximately equal now let us understand the various measures of spread the first range one of the measurements of variation of data is referred to as range it is the simplest measure of variation and is the difference between the highest and the lowest values it represents 
the end to end spread of the data how many data points are we replacing when we move from the highest value to the lowest value or from the lowest value to the highest value etc range equals the maximum minus the minimum in this data set you can clearly see that 21 is the largest value that i have while the lowest or the minimum is 2 hence the range would become 21 minus 2 which is 19 that means when we are moving from the highest to the lowest values or from the lowest to the highest value we are moving by 19 range should be targeted to be kept at the lowest possible lower the range better is the variation in the system larger the range meaning that the difference between the highest and the lowest data point is too wide the next measure is quartile quartile as the name says divides the data in four equal parts each covering 25 percent data to divide the data in four parts there are three quartiles quartile one quartile two and quartile three respectively quartile two is what is popularly referred to as the median to calculate quartile we need to arrange or sort the data in ascending or descending order after the data is ranked the first quartile from the lowest value side is q1 below which is 25 percent of the data with 75 percent of the data above it q2 is the midpoint of the ranked data which is also the median 50 percent of the data shall be above and 50 percent shall be below q2 or the median value quartile 3 is the last quartile from the lowest value side or the first quartile from the highest value side below quartile 3 is 75 percent data and above it is 25 percent to understand data it is always advisable to have values like minimum quartile 1 median quartile 3 and maximum between the minimum and the quartile 1 you will have 25 percent between quartile 1 and median you have 25 percent between median and quartile 3 you will have 25 percent and between quartile 3 and maximum you will have 25 percent quartile 1 shall use the formula of n plus 1 by 4 quartile 2 is nothing but 2 times n plus 1 by 4 and quartile 3 is 3 times n plus 1 by 4 note the above formula gives the position of the quartiles and we will need to calculate the values from the data like i mentioned first quartile referred to as q1 is the lower quartile and it splits the lowest 25 percent of the data the second quartile also referred to as the median cuts the data in two halves of 50 percent each while the third quartile designated as q3 also referred to as the upper quartile splits highest 25 percent of the data or the lowest 75 percent let us consider a simple example let us say that we have a data set having data points as 4 2 8 6 and 10 and we need to calculate the quartile from this data set first we will need to arrange the data in ascending or descending order after arranging the data in ascending order using the formulae we will calculate the position of the quartiles here in our example there are five data points so using the formula for quartile we have q1 equals 5 which is my n 5 plus 1 by 4 that is 1.5th data point shall be my quartile 1 similarly we can calculate the position of q2 and q3 which shall come at the third and the 4.5th data point respectively 1.5th data point would be average of the 2 and the 4 value that we have which is 2 plus 4 by 3 which will be 3 the quartile 2 is 6 and the 4.5th data point which is my quartile 3 shall be average of 8 and 10 which shall be 9 so my quartile 1 will be equal to 3 quartile 2 or median shall be 6 and my quartile 3 shall be 9 the next measure of 
variation is the IQR. Interquartile range or IQR is the spread of the mid 50% of the data when the data is ranked in ascending or descending order. It is the difference between the third and the first quartile. IQR is Q3 minus the Q1 and it represents the variation in the mid 50% of the data when the data was arranged in ascending or descending order. Let's look at an example. Let's move ahead with the example of the data set that we consider while calculating the quartiles. We calculated the quartile 1 as 3 and the quartile 3 as 9. Hence, the interquartile range here would be Q3 minus Q1, which would be 9 minus 3 equal to 6, which implies that the difference between the third and the first quartile is 6 or the spread of the mid 50% of the data is 6. The next measure of variation is stability factor. Stability factor, as the name suggests, reflects the stability of the process. Closer the value of stability factor is to 1, the more stable the process is considered. Stability factor mathematically equals Q1 by Q3. Stability factor closer to 1 would mean that Q1 and Q3 are closer to each other. Stability factor equaling 1 would mean Q1 and Q3 are exactly the same. Stability factor closer to 0 would mean that Q1 and Q3 are far away from each other. Note, you must understand that it is a measure of the mid 50% of the ranked data. Let's look at an example. Let us consider the Q1 and Q3 calculated from my previous example. Q1 was 3 and Q3 is 9. Stability factor shall be equal to 3 upon 9, which is 0.333. Stability factor away from 1 means that Q1 and Q3 are away from each other, that there is variation between the mid 50% of the ranked data. The next measure and a very important one is variance. Variance is a measure of dispersion of data point from the mean. To calculate variance, we calculate the square distance of data from the mean, take their summation and divide the sum by n minus 1 or the degree of freedom. Let us assume we have a data set with data points as x1, x2, x3, x4, etc. Mean is x bar and the total number of data points as n. So variance will be equal to mean minus x1 square plus mean minus x2 square plus mean minus x3 square up to mean minus xn square upon n minus 1 or variance is equal to sum of square of data points divided by n minus 1. Variance is the average of square distance of all data points from its mean. Let's understand simple steps of calculation of variance. The first thing that you should do is to calculate the mean of all data points or the x bar. Then you calculate the difference between each data points and the average. Square these figures for all data points. Add the square values together. A value referred to as sum of square in statistics would be received. And then divide the number by n minus 1 and you get the variance. Standard deviation is the most preferred measure of dispersion as it enjoys contribution from all data points. To calculate standard deviation, we take the square root of variance. Standard deviation will be equal to root of mean minus x1 square plus mean minus x2 square plus mean minus x3 square plus mean minus xn square upon n minus 1, which can also be referred as standard deviation equals root of sum of squares by n minus 1. Standard deviation is the root of average distance of all data points from its mean. Thank you.